Now, back to the show. This is The Law Show on CL 650. Now you're just somebody that I used to know. Somebody I used to know. Somebody oh, that somebody I used to know. What a big hit song from last summer. We're talking family law here, and uh, the strangers in your lives uh, may be uh, coming up into our conversation. Westside Family Law is our guests uh, today in the persons of Mark Perry and Anna Perry, the founding partners of the firm, which is expanding this fall. Congratulations to both of you. I wanted to, just before we talk about high-conflict res- high matters, whether it be custody or child support or, or relocation issues, um, there has been a very high-profile case in the news lately. Lately, that I want to just your comments on. It's been absolutely impossible to ignore this story. It comes out of Winnipeg, where a fellow who was involved in a protracted divorce proceedings against his former wife decided, for some reason that eventually we may come to know, uh, to send mail bombs, letter bombs, through the postal system to law firms that once upon a time represented his wife against him in past proceedings. One woman, a a lady lawyer at one of the firms, almost lost a hand. She was quite severely damaged and remains in hospital. Uh, There may still be other uh, letter bombs that uh, Canada Post is obviously trying to locate. Uh, The police have apprehended the individual. uh, And, of course, now there will be a criminal proceeding against him. My point with this rather long example, Anna, is the fact that when we're talking high-conflict family law, you as a representative of one side of the conflict are not beyond coming in the crosshairs of the other party yourself, are you? That's correct. The, uh, I, I suppose we're always aware that when emotions go high, they can be directed at us because yes. we're perceived as the what was hired gun Mm -hmm. Uh, so often people come for their initial consultations and they say almost every time actually i'm not out for blood i'm so (laughs) i'm not out for blood uh and then they use they use words like uh conflict or battle or war right and uh so that right from the beginning is people's perception of the process that they're about to engage in uh sorry so getting back to the subject of uh, lawyers being the subject of uh, hostility, hostility, sure, yeah. to say the least. Yeah, I think uh, both Mark and I have got instances where we've had to get police involved sure. just out of, as a precaution. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, certainly those are always uh, rather tense cases. But Mark, it, it is. It, I mean, it, and and some, uh, and and just to f- go further on what Anna was saying in terms of public perception of the role of the lawyer of the of counsel in a divorce proceedings, some people say, "Well, you know, you turned her against me. Right. It's your <laughs> fault." Right. I mean, and suddenly you're the aggressive person here. Sure. All you're doing is trying to organize somebody's life and help them through a messy right. situation. But suddenly, because you're her advocate or her representative, right. Right. suddenly it's your fault right right now you've heard that more than a few times absolutely absolutely and and you know there's some truth in that um the truth is uh my role my professional role is to inform my client of what his or her rights are sure and if that is different than what they've understood from their discussions with their partner Uh or Mm. then then i have been the instrument of uh, that person now saying hold on here um my rights are you know this right and 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 you know frankly um without wishing to put myself in the crosshairs i have told clients um on many occasions uh who are having conversations with their with their um, estranged spouse you can tell them i'm the one that has told you right this is your rights right i'll i'll take I'll take the responsibility. But it's not. But, a, but of course, what I'm telling them is absolutely the truth. Well, well, it's, it's not. It's it's their rights. It's That's not right. something you can buy or sell. That's You're right. simply informing exactly. someone of the rights that they are entitled right. to by virtue of being a Canadian. Right. Yep. So you, there's no fault lying no, there, but you not. are seen to be the enemy by That's the right. other party. And Anna's nodding very, very right. sagely here, having right. been, having worn that hat on more than a few right. occasions, right. right? Right. Oh, indeed. And I would add to that that uh, we are a representative. Uh, 
we're not lit we're not against the other party and that's quite a misconception people who think that we are you know pit bull shark uh gunslinger leech, gunslinger All yes that, yep. no uh our role is actually quite a, a civilized and ethical role under our code of contact and uh, so as professionals, we have a duty not to go beyond. We're, we're to uh, treat people with courtesy and respect. Right. And uh, I think it would surprise people to know that that's actually written into our code of ethics. Interesting stuff. And, of course, because these uh, emotional outbursts do occur from time to time on a somewhat disturbingly regular basis in the high conflict cases, Anna. Um, the police do have to, as Mark has mentioned already, from time to time, for your own safety, the mm -hmm. police need to be advised that this, this is getting a little weird here. Sure. Uh, there are some e emails or threatening phone calls or the guy pulled me aside in the parkade under the courthouse and said this and that. You have to, you have to report that Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely, yes. Okay. So, I mean, I was sharing with you at the break, uh, Sterling, the experience I had and probably 15 years ago, and it was a, a, a gentleman on the other side of a file living in the, in the Okanagan, and um, he had fired his lawyer, and to a great extent his case was sort of over. There were some, just some details that we were working. So because he had no lawyer, he was communicating directly with me, and, and over a period of time he became more and more inappropriate in his communications. Okay. And at one point in time, he uh, emailed me and asked me if I really, if I was into riding motorcycles. That he had friends who had motorcycles, and they were planning a trip to Vancouver, and they would come and pick me up. And then the next email was they were also into guns, you know, target practice in quotation marks. Ah. Maybe I could participate in their pr target. Talk practice. about a thinly veiled threat. <laughs> well, I, and I, uh, you know, I was, I was, I was concerned. No kidding. I, and I contacted the Vancouver police. Right. And I was sharing with an officer on the other end of the phone what this conversation was, what this email exchange was about, and um, she was saying I was feeling a sense of threat, and uh, I wished for you know the police to take note and do something about this, and. Um, the officer was somewhat dismissive, mm -hmm. you know, perhaps hearing from me that uh, this gentleman was in the Okanagan and it wasn't, you know, too, too a safe distance active. Away. Yeah, sure. a safe distance yeah. away. Yeah. And then I, I read to the officer what was being said. The guns and the target practice. But no, it was, it was the motorcycle. Okay. It was, my friends have motorcycles. Oh, okay. And there was an immediate change in the Vancouver police response. And he, in fact, he put me on hold and said, I'm going to have somebody else speak to you. And it was the um, gang Hells Angels task force oh, I see. that came on the phone. Right. And I had an officer in my, in my office within about an hour and a half to look at the specific emails and, the, and, a, and a train of emails from this person. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I was really worried. <laughs> well, what, you, what have I un, un, uh, fallen into here? Exactly. Well, I think my point in, the, in raising this matter this morning was simply in the, in the wake of this very sensational national news story is to remind <coughs> our, our listeners that even though it's family law, you're not mixing up with, with known criminals and you're not involved in international smuggling and espionage and all. It seems fairly benign, but emotions run very, very high. Uh, and it's uh, those in the profession do encounter uh, some pretty ugly uh, scenarios along the way from time to time. Anna, uh, we were talking earlier about high conflict matters, and you talked about uh, custody and support and relocation issues, but you said in a lot of high conflict divorce scenarios, the conflict comes from one or perhaps even both parties being absolutely unwilling to, get, to, to go along, to get along with anything. They're just, they are at war full stop, and that's that. How do those cases ever get resolved if someone refuses to get along? Well, interestingly, there's uh, there's two sides or two streams. Uh, the, uh, the one stream is where one party has a psychological or uh, what would you call personality disorder, okay. narcissism, uh, something that just drives their bus. And they think they're in the right, and they think they're the victim. They think that they're they're the one who's going to save the day. Ironically, so they don't see that the da they don't see the damage that they're doing to the family, the children, their finances. Uh, to them, it is perfectly okay that there would be 
uh, application after application and never <clears throat> and they will never say uh, yes and the reason they won't say yes is they perceive that's that's giving in it's it's wrong they just they just can't say yes so they've been wronged and any mayhem that ensues from them having been wronged is perfectly okay mm -hmm. it's what happens to me when you cross me exactly uh, they don't mm -hmm. see it as wrong uh, they see that they're they're completely right and they're the victim uh, then the other the other scenario is where you have two people who have just uh, stayed together too long, or perhaps you have two people with personality disorders. But uh, th I think the people who fall into the category of just angry at each other, mm -hmm. they can they can have a resolution if it if the situation is managed quite well and there's a lot of communication between the two lawyers, perhaps involving divorce coaches, uh, counselors etc and trying to diffuse the situation and r get them to regain or regain some common ground do these cases take long and the reason i'm asking you this because i'm going back to that story about the the, the guy in winnipeg uh, and the story in the paper and mark you read the same story i did mm -hmm. uh, the guy apparently was involved in divorce proceedings against his former wife for a period of uh, extending of, of around 10 years anna and i'm wondering how on earth could something drag on for 10 years but then mark reminded me that Kids grow up. Circumstances change. So mm -hmm. even though you had an okay deal eight or ten years ago, well, there, there are terms and conditions that were agreed to then that simply don't apply anymore and need to be revisited. Is that does that happen pretty? Is that commonplace? Oh yes. Uh, if you think about the think about some files uh, having a, having a lifespan, uh, there, there's a change the children are young they grow up so then they have to go to university uh, so that may or may not be a tremendous change or perhaps someone gets sick uh, many changes of circumstances right. and then perhaps the most common culminating factor would be retirement mm -hmm. um, of one of the two parties and then the higher income earner paying support uh, wants to know when that's going to end and the other party of course is afraid that it will end Okay. So, Mark, in terms of these high, uh, uh, high conflict matters, does it? Uh, I would think that if if there was going to be something to really disagree about, it might be the children and and the parenting issues. The university, which which university is Junior going to go to? <laughs> My alma mater or hers? Uh, and 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 I'm being somewhat flippant. And I don't mean to be because we're talking about high conflict matters. But what is the essence of the conflict in most of those matters? It, it is um, largely centered on the children. Okay. Very very clearly. But, but, you know, as Anders just alluded to, uh, uh, and I've had many instances where it doesn't take much for parties to disagree. Okay. It, it, it can be whether, you know, the child um, plays soccer or plays baseball. <laughs> right. Um, at, that, you know, people are going to go to war over some issues like that. It can be whether um, the pickup or drop-off time is from 4 p.m. or 6 p.m. Uh, people can go to war for that. For right. some people, it doesn't take much for them to uh, decide this is, you know, where they're going to draw the line in the sand. And and they have a perception that uh, anything other than this is complete and absolute, uh, giving in to the other side. Uh, we're going to talk about the specifics like custody and relocation and stuff, but just before we go to break here, um, if, if you and both of you have dealt with uh, clients like this, if someone comes into your office and they are just determined to punish the other party mm -hmm. at all costs, and may even start off with, well, I'm not out for blood, really. But. <laughs> but, <laughs> but. <laughs> it's that huge but. So uh, your job is to get, the, get, get a resolution to this file, right. to get this person through the divorce matter to the satisfaction of all concerned. Right. How do you talk someone down? down from that hard, hard taken, mm -hmm. aggressive, mm -hmm. really bitter uh, mm -hmm. position, kind of dug in too, Mark. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm here to punish and I really, uh, uh, I'll pay you what you want. Right. Uh, just make sure that this, I win and that person gets punished. Right. How do you talk somebody down from that? You know, it's, it's, it's quite straightforward. And I think this comes from experience. Um, I, I think it comes from doing this for 29 years. Um, I, I don't argue with the person at that point. Okay, I, I hear them, I, I, I validate what they're saying, I talk to them about the process, uh, how long it might take, mm -hmm. I talk to them about um, positions that they're going to take might make it longer, 
and I certainly talk about positions that they may take and attitudes that they have, it's going to cost them an awful lot more money. Right. So I'm not saying no. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm giving them information. And and the, the, the beautiful thing is the things they're saying to me that day are generally things I don't have to act on immediately. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, I'm three weeks down the road, second meeting, you know, perhaps I've started a claim in court. Um, we're in the process and we're going into the first part of the court process. And there is a process. It takes maybe a year, maybe six months, year and a half. Um, I have the, another conversation with the person. And hopefully they've calmed down. <laughs> right. Hopefully they've been a bit more realistic. Hopefully they've heard some of this. And of course, I, I you know, I've had that may, conversation maybe and done, I've sent them a letter. Just, and maybe they've done some math. Yes. <laughs> in, in, the, in the weeks Absolutely. since last Sunday. Sure. He was right. This is going to cost me a fair chunk of change. That's right. For, yeah. And for what benefit? But I guess, Anna, in some cases, money simply doesn't matter. And revenge is the ultimate uh, uh, objective. Oh, definitely. We had uh, a case... Uh, that concluded in 2015. It was supposed to conclude in 2014. Uh, and I know the party's legal fees were exorbitant. I'm, I hesitate to say it on the air, but it, it was over a million dollars. Oh, my. Oh, goodness. And so, again, uh, it, it was the satisfaction, if you will, of seeing the other party squirm that was worth whatever that tab ended up being for that Individual. There was definitely an element of that on one side. My goodness. Because our position was fairly uh, amenable, reasonable, mm -hmm. uh, in agreement, and uh, we were quite surprised <clears throat> that the other party insisted on calling witnesses on what we thought were non-issues. Uh, and the purpose of calling those witnesses, each one seemed to be just to turn the, uh, turn the knife a little bit. Uh, it was a tough, a tough trial. I imagine it was. We're going to talk about uh, some specifics in high conflict uh, uh, issues in, uh, in family matters. Our guests are the founding partners of Westside Family Law, which is about to expand, no less, at the same address, 1367 West Broadway in Vancouver. You can check them out online at westsidefamilylaw.ca while we take the following quick time out here on Sea Isle 650. There's more of the show still ahead. This is The Law Show on Sea Isle 650.